All right, welcome to the Insight Podcast. I'm your host, Nikon Gormley, and today you are all in for a real treat because today I have the Karen Goldfinger Baker. She is a renowned executive and leadership coach, and um, I want to put her whole bio in the description, but she's worked with game-changing titans and game-changing companies like Amazon and Disney, TBWA, Art Labs and retired NFL professionals. And um, to me, to me, when I think about who Karen is, I've, I've had a coach crush on you since I've started my work as a coach. <laughs> because I've always respected your work and admired your work because to me, you were always the coach who 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 you could tell like you really cared but suddenly you like you really didn't give a shit and you it's <laughs> it's so true for your messaging and your power and your strength and you and I've listened to you talk so many times and there's this so what it feels like to me is like because you you were able to not care about what people are thinking about you're really expressing your voice I really feel how much you do care and I brought you on the podcast today because I'm so curious about that. Like, where does that come from? And how does that allow you to walk into these rooms with these titans and do the work that you do? And later, I know that you also are the founder of the Trauma Hiders Club podcast. So we're going to be talking about that, too. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Nikon. This is wonderful. I'm so glad to be here. It's so funny. Your coach crush. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. That's why I started this thing. So I could have excuses to talk to people like you. I love that. That's really, that's really cool. So So, yeah, yeah. go for it. Your question, ask your question again. I'm curious as to, well, to me, I'm curious about what is it about your ability to just really speak your mind and express your truth on the outside, it looks like you don't care, but then in getting to know you, you, you do care a lot. And what is that balance that allows you to do the kind of work you do? Yeah. Um, so the thing is, I, I clearly care. Yeah. Um, I could be in this, I couldn't be a coach if I didn't care. Um, I think the magic mm. <laughs> is not so magical at all. And it comes from a lifetime of caring too much. Mm. So I'm someone who experienced childhood trauma and my trauma response was, I'm gonna make sure everyone thinks I'm whole and perfect. I didn't have the words for that, I was 10 years old, but but you know, essentially my system or my operating mechanism was to, I'm gonna make sure that you don't actually see the damage inside of here. Mm. And so that kicked in at 10. Um, So I kind of overcompensated in terms of, I'm going to make sure that, you know, you see me show up, that you see me as a connector, that you see me as a leader, that you Mm. see me a high performer. And what, it wasn't until my, adult years, and by the way, like into my 40s, <laughs> no, I'm going to go beyond that, into my 50s, I'm in my 50s, where I made, I, don't, I, I was about to say I made this, the decision, the decision was made for me mm-hmm. in, um, not because somebody demanded it, but I was living one life in my pretend world, right? The world that I wanted people to see and then living the other half of my life in the shit show that I believed I was. So the, the choice to get that handled is what sent me on this trajectory of, I got to stop caring about what people think of me right? And start caring for what I think of me. And that process led to healing. And that healing process led to freedom. And that freedom led to peace. So I often, you know, when people talk about 
when the when the millions of people talk about Karen Goldfinger Baker. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> You're not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I always hear badass, yes. and the and that is totally a persona mm. that that I was bringing. I am a badass, but in a completely different way than I think the universe has defined badass. Mm. Uh, I'm an I'm a badass in that. Not only am I committed to my own truth and my own peace, I'm committed to yours too. Yeah. And as you were speaking, what came to mind was, I'm just so curious as to what you've seen on the battlefield with your clients. Yeah. And you know, you know what comes to mind? Remember, um, I think it was yesterday, I sent you a video of Marco Pierre White, the chef. And he was yes. speaking on MasterChef. And he was like, he was telling like, 30 new chefs like all right look the truth is I am terrified of not being good enough and that yeah. it was has driven me to be this good because every time I put something on the plate I think it's not good enough and he said something yeah. that was like oh Karen would would get that he said yeah I am still the scared little boy yeah. and I wonder what have you seen in in kind of under that theme with your clients and the game changing because I think from the outside looking in you would think of Marco Pierre White or an NFL player like as impenetrable or indestructible. Right. Yeah. 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 What I've seen is hum is is humanity. Mm. Right. I've seen, I've seen the person across from me. I've seen their humanity. And what I know about who they are inside, and I'm not saying that I know who they are inside, but that person who is buried beneath the shit show mm. is that there is, right, there's a brilliance inside of there that's just covered by years and years and years of stories, pretending, showing up. So I'll tell you something interesting. My coaching practice, I never said, and first of all, I never had a website until I had a website, which was about four months ago. Um, because I have a podcast, it has to live somewhere. So I have a website. Um, I never put out into the world, come, hey, broken people, come to me because yeah. I'm broken too. <laughs> I didn't say like, hey, bring your trauma, bring your mm. shit, bring your shit, bring those terrible stories you tell about yourself. But what I discovered mm. was the thing that was holding only 100% of my clients back was some what they deemed significant trauma in their life that created a story of not enoughness, damaged, broken, dark, shitty, shit mm. show. And I could see that because that's my story, right? We're always coaching ourselves. So mm. yeah, but I didn't know, like, I want this to be clear. Like, I didn't know they were bringing that. I mean, right. eventually I saw a trend and I was like, oh, I'm going to see if this hypothesis is true. And it always was. And the way that I would get to what's inside a person is embodying truth. Hmm. Yeah. And peace. Yeah. I wonder what. What do you make of that? Because I think what I got from that was the people who come to you, like they get that you get them without you saying anything almost. It's like that that soul to soul recognition. Yeah. And to speak to what you're speaking to and the people, like I think I've had the privilege and pleasure of working with very game changing people. And I was astounded. That, like that shifted my whole life. I was like, wait a minute. You're not as indestructible as you appear to look you're like. No, I am so fucking terrified of the world. Yeah. That's why I need to keep doing like, oh shit and yeah. my reaction was again humility it was like oh oh mm. like like you need a hug yeah <laughs> but you're terrified yeah. to ask for one you know right yeah. yeah I do think that's part of it is the the rest of the world is not going to relate to let's say it's you know a powerful well-known <clears throat> well-known person or even a power powerful mm. person in the, in their own circle, right? The rest of the world is not going to relate to that person as 
an average human. Mm. And that is such a commitment of mine. Like, push, put that aside, right? Because we aren't what we do. We are who we, who we be. So we aren't what's in the bank. We are who we be, right? So right. that's where I zone in. Mm. It's not that I don't give a shit that they're famous or have, have right. you know, made significant amounts, created significant amounts of wealth. It's that that's not my focus, right? I'm not a wealth advisor. And um, I'm not a talent agent. <laughs> so those things are not in my category of things I care about. What have I, you, yeah, what are some of the things you've seen or you, I guess, insights that you've garnered from your work over the years, like thing like commonalities or, or yeah. common threads that, that you think would be helpful to the people listening who might also be um, high achiever or superstar? Yeah. Or, or even, uh, you know, like a business CEO, you know, like someone who, who yeah. is, they may not be super well known, but, but they're the, they have to be somebody every single day. Yeah. yeah. Um, a common thread is exhaustion. Mm. Yeah. And I know, I don't know if that's what you were asking. Yeah. About. Yeah. Like yeah, tell me more about exhaustion. Yeah. Yeah. So I see this, um, I see this persona of mm. this is you know, I'm a, I'm the leader of this company and I need to pay attention to my people and I need to pay attention to my, let's say my board or my mm. funders, right? My investors. And there's so, and I need to pay attention to my family if, if there is one. What I always see is someone who doesn't take time for themselves. Mm. And I, you know, I'm, I, by the way, I, I am also that person, right? That's why I can see it. So what, what I think the, the process that I go through is to point that out, you know, in a, in a way that my person can relate. Um, like if someone said to me, Oh, and how are you taking care of yourself? Like rage comes up in me. Like, shut the fuck up. Throw a punch. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask, don't, don't ask Karen Goldfinger Baker how she's taking care of yourself. Fuck off. I got this. Right. Yeah. And yet I too, I mean, it, it ha have lived an exhausted life. So mm. the way that I work with, um, whether it's a CEO or whomever else is, to help them see where the, all of their energy is going and where it isn't going. I mean, we all do this kind of thing. And also at, at what cost, mm. right? That's, that's what's clear at what cost, because you, right. You can't be, you can't be all the big powerful things over here if you're depleted over here. Right. Yeah. And I, I resonate with that. I, I think what I've seen was, and what you said was so powerful. And I just want to reiterate that is that if trying to be somebody requires an enormous amount of energy. And I think what, yes. what you're saying and what you're pointing to is you don't have to do that. You don't. And um, I was talking to another mentor, Mavis Karn, and she, we, we, we stumbled across a really powerful insight. And it was, I think the way you and I listen to people allows people to drop who they think they need to be. Yeah. And then they stop acting out. And to, to relate, I, 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 use, I used to use that thing that I'm not good enough to drive my whole everything, like, like martial arts or sports or business, like every day just wasn't good enough, wasn't good enough. And then when someone pointed out, it was, it was really hard for me to let it go because I didn't think I would be successful without it. Mm. Have, have, you, have you found that before? Yeah. When I was just starting off as a coach, um, I was just like that. Like, I'm going to write, I come with all this experience and I'm going to be, yeah, I'm going to be this thing. Right. And I notice if I go back into who my clients were, they were also those people who, right. Yeah. 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 Snap. 
Oh, snap. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. And as I did some, you know, deep therapy, trauma work, mm. inner child work, all the things, and realized like that, that's like being a prisoner. Mm. Right. Because you're a prisoner of somebody else's view of you. Right. Right. I'm their slave right. because how they see me is how I'm going to have to be. Mm. And by the way, me, it was how everybody sees me. So I'm everybody's slave. So right. I got as I dug deeper mm. into the work. I could see this in my own clients, right? My own clients get the benefit of all the work that I'm doing. And I shifted who my people were, Mm. right? It's like not people like me who are not people like the me I was Mm. trying to be, but the people like me who just want to be who they are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder if you have stories of that transformation and you don't have to mention names, but it'd be great to hear like your case studies. Of, yeah. Because um, to me, it's always amazes me when somebody really touches that space of who they really and truly are, like shit just blows up. Right. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm going to tell you, I'm thinking. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to tell you about one of my clients. Um high level at number one product in the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got it. Um, number one product in the world. And she was like a culture bearer, you know, mm. she was the, one everyone turned to, to, to represent the company. Mm. And she would show up like with all her pep and all of her wonder and all of her um, commitment and loyalty. Mm. And the truth was she was working 17 hour days Mm. and she was showing up as this person that the company wanted her to be they put like send her places to go help recruit Mm. and the and and she was kind of dying inside because Mm -hmm. overworked but she was responding to this persona that she had created that you can count on me to be all of that and through our work, she, I mean, through our time together, she had personal crisis um, and had to make decisions on how she was going to show up or not show up. And I know I'm being really kind of like not digging in. Yeah. Um, so it's okay. I, I, yeah. I'm, fo- I'm following. So yeah. just, just, just yeah. to briefly recap, it's a very uh, a person in a very high level position in a very high level business corporate and she's having to show up for everybody else but what you're seeing is you're noticing that she's dying inside and what i think yeah. you're pointing to is that she doesn't know she's dying inside right and and wondering right. why right okay right exactly it. yeah i mean to the point of she would get home from work and she was she was married she'd mm-hmm. get home from work and they'd have, while, while dinner was being made, she'd be on her computer. Mm. Um, and then after dinner on her computer. Right. So, right. And <laughs> so, yeah. So it yeah. would be like something, something uh, one of my mentors says, Mike Neal says like, that might've seemed normal to her in her world, but it certainly wasn't natural. Right. Exactly. Right. It was normal. It was how, mm. right. She was newlywed. It was how she'd always done it. So I'm, I'm working on myself, right? I get to see that someone who's so committed to connection is mm. disconnecting everywhere. 
Say that again. That was really powerful. Somebody who's so committed Somebody who's to connect. Somebody who's so committed to connection yeah. is disconnecting everywhere. Boom. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 to them in the driver's seat, they would never see that, right? But to us, it's like, like, hold up, this is weird. You know, like what's weird? Like you have the handbrake yeah. on, right? Like, yeah. Right, right. Like, how is this new re- it's not a new relationship, but how is this marriage mm. going to how are how are you actually going to come together as one if you're spending time in the evenings? during dinner on your laptop, right? It, and then we took a look, we started taking a look at all the places she was disconnecting from family, from team, from cross-functional teams, mm. just didn't have enough to give. So I, I could not have seen that, right? If I didn't do that myself. <laughs> Right, yeah. right. It's almost, yeah. um, you know, there's a saying in our world, like you can't take a client as deep as you've been, but it seems to me like right. the amount of shit you've been through directly relates to how much you can help your client. That's true. That is so true. In fact, I have on my website, I've been to the shithole. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you notice that. It says right there, I have been to the shithole. I am not afraid to go there with you. Come on, let's go. And I think in a world where, I think, I think to me, that's like the best form of loving disruption by, by telling people like I've been there, like I will go there with you. I do not mind getting my, like, you know. Yeah. 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 So I think I told you a very light story Mm -hmm. Um, and why I chose that one was her pattern of Mm. disconnecting not knowing she was disconnecting, showing up in what she believed was connection Mm. was costing her love. Oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and I imagine it's not just love in her relationship, but just like the the big L, like the big energetic love. And what I love about you pointing to that is because often times when we work for big corporates we're being asked for quantitative results right like show me numbers i'm like motherfucker love is at stake here (laughs) yes yeah that drives everything else please say more to that yeah so you know it was like i i can't i can't spend time with my husband on the couch after Mm. dinner i have to do these spreadsheets (laughs) like are you fucking kidding me no one is no one's going to bleed out if you do those spreadsheets during working hours. Right. No one's going to bleed out. No one's going to die here. Mm. The company is not going to go down. Promise you. Right. It is going to go down in flames is your relationship. Mm. In all your relationships. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read a quote today and it was, I think it was something like, it was, you know, because you and me have that thing like, um, what's the affirmation fairies? Like, fuck, you yes. feel better, right? But this yeah. one slipped through because I, I heard it. It was, um, if all someone could be, that would be the greatest service to the world is to be love, like the big L, like that big energetic presence of right. just being kind and loving. And I was like, I sat with that one for a while. And it, I was like, oh, yeah, it is that simple. It's that simple. Yeah. yeah and that hard. And that heart, you know, and so what was the, what was the, what happened to your client? Yeah. So not only did my client continue to, Mm. oh, for a while, you know, I'd give her these, what, what, I guess I'd give her these challenges. Mm. So, you know, for this week only, what would it look like if you didn't open your laptop? in the evening. I mean, it sounds so simple. Let me tell Yeah. I, I kind of feel ridiculous sharing this part, but what's so important is all she had to do was close her laptop. Mm. And it was so difficult. It was so difficult for her. But what, what closing down her laptop, let's say at eight o'clock, which mm. still allowed her to still 
do her habit, what, what that did was open her up to relating more deeply to her husband. Mm. Yeah. How they have two kids. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, because she could close her laptop, which probably would not have happened if she didn't learn how to close her laptop. You know, no. a, a question occurred to me that I'd love for you to answer, which is, I wonder what you would say to the people who who made it consciously or unconsciously really tied their value to that persona. Like, look at me. I am a famous yeah. designer. Look at me. I am this NFL player. Look at me. I am fill in the blank. And that's where my value is tied. Like, and what would you, what would you say to that? Yeah. Um, I disrupt that. Besides right? fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would disrupt that. Like, no, that's what you do. That's not who you are. Boom. That yeah. is what I do. That is what I do all day long. Mm. Right. I, I, those big shiny blingy rings that you have. Don't care. Like, okay. I care a little bit. Cause that's really fun, but yeah. <laughs> Seg segue I want to I, I know you've said this in other podcasts I'd love to hear you tell the um the shiny ring story at the airport yeah yeah okay after this okay after this, yeah. okay so that that's just it like I mm. I don't that's mm. not that's not who I'm working with right Boom. yeah yeah and I think okay. I think that's it it's it's I think, I think I get it. Or what, what I saw was it's, you're the one person in the room who can see my shit and yeah. you still love me for it. Right. Like you, you see the thing in me that I'm trying so hard to hide and you don't give a shit. And that, and it shit. just, I come apart because right. What, what I just realized was all that stuff that I just mentioned is, is what we use to hide who we really are right. because we think that part isn't I think that's it. I think that's why a lot of things firing. It's like when Marco Pierre White came out and said, I'm afraid we, there's presence in that because it's like, that's the big love coming out. You're like, damn, this guy's like, this guy's willing to show us who he really is and not give a shit. Like, dude. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, he so gives a shit. Yes. Yeah. Gives a shit so much that he's going to show, right? He's going to be vulnerable. Mm. I do emerging chefs to be so awesome mm. that you bring all parts of you, not just the parts you like. Right. Because the parts you like can't create a 10 course meal beautifully. Right. All of you has to show up. Right. And I'd love to, to riff off that is okay. What came to me was that, that shiny persona you have, you think, that is where the good shit will come from. When in fact, yeah. that's maybe 10% of your full range of power when you really sit and go through the deeper, darker parts of you and, and like who you really are, right? Yeah, yeah. right, right. So that is it. Mm. I, so I spent the vast majority of my life believing I was unlovable because I had shit, deep, dark shit, mm. right? I had childhood trauma and that defined, you know, I didn't know the words then, but that was, the, that defined me mm. broken, shitty, filthy person, not my fault, but happened to me, but I didn't want anybody to see that. Mm. So benefit of trauma. <laughs> If you spot it, you got it, right? I can see it in other people. Yeah. I'm not afraid of it. Mm. Yeah, because that's where the that's where the gorgeous human is. That's where the gorgeous human being is, is in that raw, emotional, mess, messy. Um, I was gonna say the truth. The even truth. if they don't know it's their truth, even if they yeah. don't know that that's what that is, is yeah. true. I mean, they're not all those things. Right. True self is in there. I'd love for you to share. I think that segues directly into the story. I want, I'd love for you to tell about the airport and the shiny rings, because I think it, it's like almost like you're part of your presence, right? Because you can see it and recognize it. Sometimes you don't even need to speak. Just you showing up in the room is enough 
for for that other part in people to be, oh she gets it um, yeah. she didn't say nothing yet but she gets it yeah um well i just want to speak to that she gets yeah. it Thank yes you. yes please one second and it is um i used to think i had a superpower mm. is that i could walk into a room and i could like sum it up walk out of the room and even know who was there and pretty much know everything that was going on even if nobody spoke, <laughs> right? Um, my intuition, very strong. But what I didn't know was it was actually hypervigilance. So I'll just talk one second about what hypervigilance is. Um, I mean, hyper and vigilant, right? So vigilant on steroids, essentially, because again, this is like a superpower from trauma, <laughs> right? The For me, the world had threats everywhere. So I better get there were in, in two ways. One is a threat might come at me. And secondly, a threat might discover who I really am. Right. So playing with both of those things at all time that for me, that was my hype. So my response was to be hyper vigilant, to notice everybody in the room. And the thing about power was to make sure that whoever is powerful was never gonna fucking overpower me. I will beat you to the power game. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, right, all things like, like I started creating when I was 10 years old. These were the systems I created. Okay. To survive for you. To survive, yeah, right? Hiding mm -hmm. and navigating the world on my own. I mean, believe me, I have plenty of family and friends around. They didn't know I was navigating the world on my own. Mm. So um, fast forward to, I was working, I had done a little mini retreat um, with a client and the last thing, a client group, and the last thing I left them with was, uh, and we were, we were speaking about power. It was all about the retreat was all about power. And the last thing I left them with was, okay, for the next week, no matter where you are, find the most powerful person in the room and have a conversation with them they'll never forget. Okay, and while you're doing that, notice what's happening somatically. What is happening in your body around power? Are you getting sweaty? How are you defining potty? How, do you, how are you defining power in this moment? Mm. Um, what's happening with the other person, but mostly what's happening with you? Okay, so I give them this challenge, leave them, go to the airport. It was in LA and they had just opened up the United uh, Lounge in LA, which they redid. I mean, it was, I think it was like the first day it was open. So there was a lot going on in there, lots of food, lots of drinks. Lots of people because there was a big storm uh, east, you know, from basically from like the middle of the country east and um, all flights were delayed if they were coming from the east. And I was flying from L.A. to Cleveland, Ohio. So my flight was delayed like six hours at least. And so I thought, all right, here I am in this lounge. I have some time. I have a lot of time. Huh, maybe I should do the thing that I just made up for my clients. <laughs> just pulled that one out. Uh, huh, maybe I should try my own stuff. So I looked around. I saw all these people, like people sitting on laps. It was so crowded, except for... In this one section, there were two chairs facing one way and two chairs facing another. So it was like this quad of chairs, one person sitting in it, the other three empty. And I thought, okay, well, whoever is sitting there is going to be the most powerful person in the room. Um, and as I approached, I saw a humongous human, a very large person. And I thought, okay, right now I'm defining power by size. Mm. So I, the chair next to him was empty. So I said to him, 
Um, hang on one second. I have to let my dog. Yeah, back. yeah, it's okay. 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 Um, okay. So, so there's a ch an empty chair next to him, two behind. And I thought, well, I could either sit next to him or sit behind him. But if I'm playing the game, I better sit next to him. So I said, and he had like his iPad and magazines and books on the chair next to him. And I said, excuse me, I'd love to sit here. And this gigantic hand like comes <laughs> and picks up his stuff. And they're like, I think there were two rings on this hand. And then I happened to notice like a big ass blingy watch and maybe another ring and something else. I don't even know. Everything was very blingy. And I said, dude, that those rings are blinding me with all that bling. Tell me about them. Right. So now I'm discovering because those are really shiny. I'm so now I'm associating the rings with some accomplishment. I'm no dummy, right? That they look that yeah, way. Yeah. So plus I'd never seen anything that looked like that. Um, and so tell me about those rings. Well, this is a Super Bowl ring, and this is a maybe a Pro Bowl All American football, right? This is American football. Um, and the watch was some kind of maybe like. Um, Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm not sure. I don't know if you get right. a watch. You get an ugly jacket. But um, so we sat down. So I sat down and he, you know, he's telling me about all that. And I said, well, tell me who is the most powerful person in your life? Mm. And like, you know, it looks at me strange. What? I said, really, like, who's the most powerful person in your life? And he, he like kind of turns his body, couldn't turn it very much because it was a small chair and a large man. But he's, you know, now he's like, I could see he's leaning in and he starts naming like um, his big mama, his grandmother, um, a teacher, some early coaches, like when he played when he was young. And, and then, he's, you know, he was naming some professional football coaches um, and, and Jesus. And um, then he said, oh, wait, it's me, not me, him, right? <laughs> wait, it's me. <laughs> and so I, was, I thought in that moment, check, right? Self-aware. He's self-aware and he's powerful, right? Because he, he knows that he's the most powerful person in his life. Right. So my next question was, who is the most power, who was the most powerful influence in your life? And he goes kind of through the same list, Jesus, his grandmother, um, a priest, coaches. And he talked about a high school coach for a couple minutes. And then he said, I wish retirement came with a coach. And I said, give me that big bear paw, dude. High five. Big bear me. paw. <laughs> <laughs> right, high five me. And I said, retirement does come with a coach. And that's why I'm here. Mic drop. <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> and so I got to talk about what I did. I can't even imagine what I said back then. Yeah. Um, but whatever it was, it, he connected with it. We mm. talked couple hours and we made you know we made a time to go deeper and had a great coaching session and he didn't want to work with me mm. um he was like no I don't want to do this I said okay cool I want you to tell your wife about our conversation and why you don't want to work with me and he did that and then two days later, he called me and he said, okay, I'm going to work with you. And my wife wants, <laughs> my wife wants to know if you're willing to move in with us. 
<laughs> okay, I have to pause for a second. I have to let my dog back in. Okay, back. Okay. So, so a pro footballer asked you to move his pro footballer's wife asked you to move in and coach yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, and coach him. Uh, she she even said, like, we'll put on an addition. I doubt they well, in fact, I know they didn't need it. Um yeah. So it was right. He didn't want to do the work at first. Mm. It was very confronting. Everybody else in his life had been a threat to him mm. because they always wanted something from him. Trust is a big issue in professional sports, especially the higher you go. Trust is a big issue. I think it's a big issue in fame. I think it's a big issue everywhere, personally. But um, trust is a big tell me more about that why is it a big issue yeah um because what i noticed is people always want something mm. say as a professional player even retired people always want something whether it's an autograph a picture a speaking engagement um their money mm. um access to them when all they want is to be normal human beings. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, I think that there certainly are retired players who want a lot of glitz. I, I don't know many of them who, I haven't seen a lot of them who are like that. Um, I, I can, I can, I don't know what the word in English is. I mean, I can, Confirm. I think a lot of people in my yeah. circles are at that level, and that's all they really want to. They just want to be fucking normal. Yeah. And and wear a t-shirt and not have to be somebody because it's fucking tiring to be on yes. all the time. Yeah. 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 It really is. I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Um. What is it about being real that? scares people i was having a conversation with a client about how most people get to the 98 yard line like professional football and the moment they see the touchdown it scares the shit out of them the moment like and you, you kind of hinted at it too in your conversation with this gentleman about how he had the opportunity to get real but you sent him away to check in with his wife and his wife said go get real like yeah. what is it about getting real that 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 elicits in us a knee-jerk reaction that says fuck no you know like what the fuck yeah i think that there's fear mm. yeah there's fear if you really knew me you wouldn't want to be near me right so if i reject you if i push you away i'm i'm still in control yes because if you get really get to know me and you reject me holy shit Right, because then you're rejecting the real me. Oh. That's rough stuff. That's some rough, sh that's some deep shit, Karen. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. 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 And what I think is, it's it's such a paradox, right? It's the biggest thing we fear of getting rejected of who we, who we truly are. And when you're actually sitting in who you really are, you, you actually don't give a shit about being rejected. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it's the best. <laughs> if you're, you're not for me, I'm not for you. Cool. Mm, cool. We don't have to, we don't have to put any energy over there. Right. Yeah. You know, I spent, um, when I was creating my website, for example, right. I think I'm referring to that because it was hard to like put a written expression around uh, this with, right into yeah. copywriting. <laughs> yeah. Right. The thing about my website is it's for my people. And at, at the same time, it is for not my people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Both ways. Like my people will go to my website and see like, oh, fuck yes, I'm in. Yeah. Or, or no, I'm offended. <laughs> like Karen Baker or, just offended me with her copyright. Right. <laughs> right. Or those people who are like, yikes. Who, is, who does this woman think she is or whatever they want to say, like, this right. is not my vibe, right? It, for me, it works as a filter to keep them away. Mm. They don't get access. 
And to, to your credit, I, I use your website as a teaching tool, actually, to point people like you, you can do that. And yeah. with, with um, a lot of my clients are new coaches and they're like, they come in with this idea of the way they're supposed to be and, you know, the way it's supposed to look. I'm like, go look at Karen's website and then come back and then we will talk yeah. about it. And they're like, I didn't know you could say the word fuck on a website. I was like, now you do. <laughs> yeah, now you do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But really it's, you know, am I somebody who wants to be known as someone who has lots of fucks on her website? Um, well, kind of, but not really. That's not I the would, point. Yeah. That's not the point. The point is we're just, we're just saying things as they are. We're just putting yeah. it out. Beautiful. So yeah. I want to respect your time. Um, so one of the questions I'd like to ask people on the podcast is if you were to give a gift to the people listening who perhaps are your people or are not your people, what would that gift be? And it could be a knowing, it could be an insight, or it could be a pointing. Mm -hmm. what, would, what would you give? Um, I would give the, I, I think it's an insight. Um, that, that you and everyone around you wants to be acknowledged, wants to be loved, wants to be heard, and wants to be seen. And if you can keep those kind of stacked in your head, you can point to, even if it's in anger or in violence or in miscommunication, the knowledge that the person or group across from you, that's, that's really all anybody really wants. Mm. Yeah. Is hear me, like see me, acknowledge what I want and love, do it with love. I have a new, I think from talking to you, I have a newfound appreciation and respect for our work. And, and um, to read from your bio, it's your stand for brilliance, integrity, joy, sovereignty, truth, and zest. And what I'm adding to that, I guess, is standing for who the fuck you really are. Yeah. Regardless of your bullshit, your stories, your excuses, is I will see you and hear you and feel you. And I still love you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Stay for who you are sounds simple. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, um, and also, I want you to talk about your Trauma Hiders Club podcast. I know that it's okay. also a big theme that you're working on right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, right, hiding, right, hiders, just the word, um, is pretty much the driving force of the vast majority of my life was hiding, hiding trauma, hiding uh, the damage that I believed I was. So I came to the, that I needed to, I wanted to, create something for people like me that was not there when I needed it. And by the way, I still need it. Um, so I created this podcast. It's called Trauma Hiders Club, right? Could, I couldn't have called it anything else because I'm the founding member and the CEO um, <laughs> and the host of Trauma Hiders Club. And um, it really, it came from my 10-year-old self, right? This really is a gift to my 10 year old inner child. And it's, a, it's on all of the podcast platforms. And um, I, think, I think the show, at least my intention is that it's a beautiful blend of what's real and deep and dark um, in trauma. And also that there are resources available um, and that there are sometimes ridiculous and even hilarious outcomes from trauma. So it's a blend of really some heavy 
deep, dark stuff, but we don't go into traumas. There's no trauma porn, so to speak. Right. (laughs) Right. Like people, my guests have talked about, you know, somewhat that they have trauma, maybe name it. And, um, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of deep stuff and there's a lot of laughter and it's basically like wonderful conversations with, um, incredibly feeling friends. Mm. Yeah. And all that will be in links in the description and links to your website and your work. And uh, I'm so pleased for, with this conversation. I think there's so many golden nuggets. And I, I learned and recognized a lot about myself, about the people I work with. And um, what really stood out for me was that distinction of, of where we think our power is. With, like, we think our power is on the outside stuff. Yeah but our power really is in our, who we really are and how, but I see the bridge, walking that bridge from, from the outside, the inside, it can be terrifying and how helpful it is to have someone like you or me to yeah. hold your fucking hand, you know? Right, yeah. right. The thing is, it is terrifying. And yet coming out on the other side, it is so simple yeah. and so glorious and so free and so peaceful. Yeah amazing amazing well yeah thank you so much karen for coming on and um it's been an absolute pleasure yeah thanks for having me this was fun this was fun all right i'll see you later karen i'm gonna okay. stop recording bye okay bye-bye